And we're back with On the Record with Tiffany and... Kevin. <laughs> uh, hey, welcome back to the show. So the, the part here is we want to talk about transplantation, right? Which is, that is the key. So get, receiving a transplant, a kidney transplant, is the optimal uh, form of treatment for kidney failure. And so we want to talk a little bit about that. And uh, Well, it's uh, the optimal form of of treatment for kidney failure and for anybody who needs a transplanted organ. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, often people think that it's uh, nearly impossible to get a transplant. People talk about it because we, we talk about it um, because it is the gift of life. When somebody gives you a transplant, it is truly the gift of life. And that's how we, you know, that's how Latrice and I met was through a wonderful um, advocacy coalition called Honor the Gift, mm -hmm. because we have to honor the gift of life. The gift of life, it is literally, you watch a person emerge back into life when they get a transplant. And let's talk about the statistics because uh, we've been we've been planning for 2024 and there's a lot going into it, right? So on dialysis, right, compared to a transplant, the first people die on dialysis within the first five years on average, right? So it's like, was it 60%? 65% of people on average die within the first five years. Who are on dialysis they die within the first five years of dialysis. Yeah. And then you transplant wow. that. So dialysis really, being, being, you know, dialysis is something that you want to be able to move off of if you have to go on dialysis. Our goal is to keep people from, from having to go on dialysis because we know mm -hmm. how, um, how life-altering it is. And dialysis, and dialysis should be uh, just a stop. It, it should be a temporary stop as you're moving toward a transplant. stop on transplant. the road to transplantation. Right. If you even have to get there, because th there should be other things, too. You could be preemptive. There's a whole lot of things that can be done in that process. Whereas if you're receiving a transplant, right, the, the life expectancy almost two and a half times that, depending on the age of, and the health. But on average, it's far better. So let's talk about. And the quality of life is far better as well. So let's talk about some of the things that we deal with as uh, African Americans, as minorities, trying to navigate this process. So, well, Reg, what was your challenge uh, throughout that whole process? Um, well, not my project, man. It, the, the, like you say, the, 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 the dialysis is, is um, you don't want to be there, man. You don't want to be there. I mean, no. you, you, to me, I looked at it like I was looking at my life, man, just, just go in front of me with the, with the blood going from my body to a machine and coming back into my body. I'm like, this thing, if an earthquake happened right now, anything happened, it's like my whole life is right there. The blood, you know, then I started getting darker. I didn't know I was getting darker. Man. I got so dark that I come home at night, man. My wife didn't even know I was there, man. She thought I was a hole in the bed. <laughs> you are a mess. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, man. You know, but um, it does, it does um, get you. It is very discouraging, you know, having to be somewhere. What um, twelve hours of your week is devoted to sitting in the chair, you know, letting your blood line you know, flash in front of your eyes, man. So yeah. if anybody, you know, um, having issues, get that check now, you know what I mean? Don't even wait till you start having issues. Get Always, you know, know your body, make sure your body, this is like a car, man. We always go get our cars and stuff tuned up and, and all changed, but we don't do that for our bodies, you know what I mean? We'll wash our dishes better than we wash our bodies. <laughs> you know what I mean? We take a shower for about two minutes but you wash your dishes for 30, you know what I mean? We don't take care of ourselves as we do our appliances and, and, and cars and stuff, you know? So get checked, man, because the, the process is, is, is a long, hideous process and, and doctors poking and prodding on you, you know? Um, so I would encourage everybody to get, you know, screened for, for kidney disease. Yeah, I, you know, I was, uh, I was the last three weeks we had a, three deaths in the family over the last three weeks. And, and then we ha one of the people who died is my cousin's sister. Well, my cousin 
had a brain bleed. His name is Frederick. Frederick had a brain bleed, and he woke up with, uh, to find out that he was going into renal failure. And I will uh -huh. tell you that that was difficult. It was difficult talking yeah. with him and walking him through what this was going to be. It is hard to, uh, for, have, for somebody to be a leader, you know, a provider for his family, yeah. a, a great dad, and to have him scared at the, you know, at 68, 69 years old, trying to deal with something like renal failure. Mm -hmm. And all of the challenges within, in the system, just trans, transferring from being healthy to, to trying to walk through this. And it's not, mm -hmm. you know, the system itself is not easy to engage. Yeah. You know, some of the people that are working in, in centers are wonderful, and some of them are not. Yeah, so. Not at all. J just for me, right, I, I, I very much believe in, in people uh, controlling their own destiny, right? I, mm -hmm. I don't like waiting for people to do something for me. Uh, I, I want to be the person who's in, who, who is initiating and going out and doing and doing things, right? Which is one of the big things that we're promoting here yeah. at the here at the uh, at the foundation is is empowering the individuals who need the kidney, right? Because I know there's a big move and a big push, and, I, and I'm for this, right? And, I, and I'm, it's wonderful that these organizations are doing it, where they're trying to get individuals to donate kidneys, right? The Donated kidney, mm -hmm. you know, it's the gift of life, and so there's an individual given to within a group of people, right? When for me, right, uh, people don't respond to the masses. The masses don't. You don't get a response. You say there are a million people because our and the, and the research supports this. Mentally, we can't we can't that concept of a million people. But I know Reginald Ballard. Uh, I know mm -hmm. Latice Latricia Lights. I, I can see them individually, and I'm more apt to help them individually, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the big push that we're doing here at the foundation is we want to help the individuals who need a kidney, teach them and show them how to go out and solicit for a kidney and, and do it the ethical way. And we're right? doing that by empowering the community with yep. knowledge. The, the way you do that is knowledge. Yep. You make this transparent so that people understand what kidney disease is, mm -hmm. What leads to it, and we know that that's diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and obesity, mm -hmm. that they know that. We want them to know it just like they know uh, that they need to have an annual mammogram. You can, yeah, pull, yeah. you can pull any dude off the street, you know, and ask him, hey, what, what do women have to do to check their breasts? People know that you have to press your breast. Yeah. Just check it. You can pull right. women off the street and women can tell you what needs to be done to check the prostate. We mm -hmm. want the, that level of knowledge about <laughs> kidneys. I like how you did that. I like how you said, you know, to check the prostate. <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> you see what I have to deal with? Um, I definitely agree. We need to know our bodies inside and out. Yeah. Um, I just had my blood work done today, this morning. <laughs> I'm going for my dental appointment this afternoon. We need to be checking everything, especially yep. people of color. Um, the, the dermatologist is very important. If you feel any lumps, bumps, bruises, something is painful, make sure you call your doctor. Yeah. Um, in regards to kidney, now, I didn't have a kidney transplant, but they are watching my creatinine level like very closely. Yeah. And the reason why is just just like uh, Ridge was saying, when you there, you're on dialysis and that machine is taking your blood out and cleaning it and then putting it back in. It's recycling. And that's what your kidneys are actually meant to do. They're recycling. They're getting rid of all that toxic mm -hmm. stuff. So mm -hmm. if they're not right. doing what they're be doing and you can't do what you're supposed to do yeah um and it, again it is a lot of time out of your days and then that turns into weeks and so on and so forth until you're able to get a kidney whether it's from yeah, someone and, you know or or someone else um so 
I definitely I haven't been through it and I'm trying to do what they tell me to do which is push fluids push fluids push fluids and Ray said he was up all night but that's a good thing because that yeah. means the kidneys yeah. are doing yeah it is exactly. you know and, and it's and you going to you going to get to the dentist huh you gotta get those guns. Put a piece of gum in that gap. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> my, my grandmother had a gap. My father has a gap. So my I. Girl, that grandma, gap is cute. Father, you are cute with that sister, gap. My aunt, everybody in my family have a gap just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm like, Just put some in there, girl. Be good with it. <laughs> As, uh, you know, it's cute on you though it's cute on you thank you thank you I, I be trying, I be trying to, my birthday was October 14th I just turned 46 I'm big on those breast exams even for men because a lot of men have breast cancer and don't know it yep. that's why I like you because mine was on the 13th October 13th oh happy birthday you too Leapers in the house. Leapers in the house. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, silly. I mean, with somebody else paying Chris and somebody else kidney, but we up in here. Okay. okay. And to That's the right. food thing, though, so you said you have a hard time with meat. I have a hard time with shrimp, and I used to love all seafood. So I'm assuming. That my uh, donor didn't like shrimp, I guess. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Ain't that something? Wow. That's yep. something. I, you know what? I used to like shrimp, too, because growing up in Galveston, Texas, is an island. That's all we did was crab and shrimp all the time. And um, I, I, for some reason, I think I made a bad batch of gumbo one time. And uh, I haven't. I haven't had shrimp since, man. I can't eat that junk. <laughs> you know, when you look at yeah. the when you look at the numbers, right? People always say when I look at the numbers, and this is fresh in my mind because we're preparing uh, different reports and strategies and stuff to reach into the communities. Is that one of the things that we always say, right? That disproportionately, black and brown people are affected by chronic kidney disease. But when you look at the actual numbers, it's almost like half of the people whose kidneys fail, right, are are, are, are white are white Americans and mm. for me that's the part when I when we talk about it right it's almost as if people believe that kidney failure is uh, it is a black and brown issue and it's not it's, it's an American issue and and we don't even make up 50% of the group the group that it's impacted are are, 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 are white people right and that's why yeah. we think and I say that because when you go through it because people tend to think it's something that only impacts us Right. And I always say, if you if it's how you treat us is how you're going to treat everybody in the system, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. right? Well, my comment on that is two things. Uh, I'm going to tell you two, two comments. I All right. It's coming. That. The boom is coming. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell where the smoke is headed his way. <laughs> he can tell after all this time. One, if it is, if were it only black and brown people, we are Americans. It's an American issue. One. Two, this is an issue that is a nationwide issue. Mm -hmm. There is not an American people group that this doesn't touch. So it's not, it doesn't just only touch black people and uh, people of Hispanic descent, but it, it touches Indian people, it touches mm -hmm. Asian people, it touches white people, it touches people of German descent, of, of Iranian. Uh, Iraqi, all those people, all those everyone. people, but all those people yeah, you yeah. just listed are yes, considered white. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, whatever, whatever. Well, well, they, they, <laughs> you know, they, they, they it the touches thing, everybody. That kidney thing that I, that kidney thing that that thing I went to, that benefit I went to in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. The majority of them was white. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> they was all white. Because and, it, what, what it's was a huge impact. What was, a, yeah, what was that? What was it? The uh, it was a. Cancer kidney thing, when it TKD uh, or T, what, PKD, what was it? polycystic kidney disease. Yeah, polycystic. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of white people. It was like a lot of white people mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it is. Yes, and polycystic yeah. kidney disease actually uh, affects uh, a high portion of uh, Asian people. A That's lot huge. of different. It, it there's a high right? number of people who are of Asian descent that are affected by polycystic kidney disease. This is something that uh, these chronic illnesses should never be bifurcated by uh, race. It just causes 
people not to pay attention to the fact that the disease is everywhere. Yeah. But, but the disease itself right. simply doesn't, it's not just I have chronic kidney disease, my kidneys are going to fail, but also kidney disease also impacts cardiovascular, right? Mm-hmm. The major- there's a, like in Texas, the number one cause of death is cardiovascular disease. And I want to mm-hmm. say anywhere from 40 to 50% uh, of that is those, those people also have uh, kidney function issues as well. They have some form of chronic kidney disease in those stages. Some stage. Yeah, mm-hmm. so when you have an impact on, because all that stuff's working together, your kidneys, your heart, your lungs, all of it's working together. Our body's an ecosystem. And your, and your kidney health is having an impact on your heart as well. So that's why mm-hmm. when people go, oh, it's just your kidneys. No, it's not just your kidneys. The kidneys do more than just clean the blood. That's the function, right? But they also mm-hmm. produce hormones. They also keep the blood warm. They do all of these amazing things that also have an impact on other things. So cardiovascular, it has an impact there. And what I'm off, what I often get frustrated with, because uh, you know, I want a solution. I'm a man by, uh, and I want a solution. There's a solution. There's solution. There's got to be a solution. Is that there are medical solutions out there? There are methods and methodologies that can solve most of the issues. But there's like this chasm between the people impacted by it, right? And the, and the availability of the results. Well, the chasm is a, a deficit in knowledge, which is what we are here for, is to provide the transparency and the simple information that people need. Because, and, and we are seeing that, that it's effective. Yeah. Because we've gone into churches, we've gone into synagogues, we've gone into mosques, and we do hands-on work. We we became clear uh, wavered. We're a clear wavered lab. We uh, test people in the field. We found the the testing devices and got. Clear wave to do what we do. There are, are very few organizations that do what we do. We're the only ones who actually uh, go out, test in the field, and follow up. And yeah. that's a key component. And walk people through, okay, here are doctors that you can go to. These are, are the therapeutics and educate them about SGLT2 eyes. Now we have people coming back to us as we're going through the neighborhoods and talking to people because that's what we do. Um, just when And we are the Texas Kidney Foundation. We so they, are, that's <laughs> right, the Texas Kidney Foundation, and, that's right. Yeah. And the thing for us that I see, right, is just that knowledge. And then what we're doing in 2024 is a focus on transplantation. Uh, doing Yes. It. So that's a big one. So uh, on transplantation, we negotiated with um, the Mendez Foundation. And what they do is they create... Um, educational material and they created two docu-series one called Link by Love which is for the African American population that's the target group that's their target uh, group with that and then the other is called Fixing Paco which their target audience is uh, the the Spanish Spanish speaking audience Mm -hmm. Um, so we negotiated with them throughout all the SAG stuff (laughs) that was tough to get uh, the right to premiere it here in San Antonio. And it's basically telling people through story, right, the importance of kidney transplantation, how to go and get a kidney transplant, you know, what it feels yeah. like, uh, you know, if you're, if you're watching a family member uh, suffer from lack of a transplantation. So that's the big deal there. That's the big project that we're working on right now. And, and we'll be doing up. that during Dream Week, mm-hmm. which is uh, January 17th to January 27th. And uh, we're going to premiere it in, in, I believe, two churches and the Mexican consulate has uh, been talking mm. with us about premiering it in uh, their venue, too, because we all know somebody who needs a kidney, who has kidney disease, who's on dialysis. Less than 20 percent of the people who are on dialysis in the United States right now are worked up to receive a kidney transplant. And then of that 20%, 40% actually don't follow through with with anything, right? And it's mostly due, there's different research, but from what I'm seeing, it's 
Though the large majority of those people who don't follow through are black and brown people. And there is a mindset that says, hey, I got myself into this situation. I really don't want to bother anybody else. Uh, and I mean, there's there's more there's more to us not following through on those transplants mm -hmm. than than simply we don't care about ourselves. Yeah. I mean, that certainly is an easy cop out for somebody who isn't us and doesn't understand our work ethic. But when it comes down to this whole um, being personally responsible, we really, in, in the black culture and in the uh, Hispanic culture, we take that very seriously. That if, if I do something, I own it. Yes. We take that yeah. very seriously. And so when you're talking about something as important as as transplantation uh i have a relative that you know i have a, a lot of relatives who have, have gone into renal failure and this particular relative had gone into renal failure and when we began to talk about it uh, he just started to cry and said am i gonna have to take somebody else's kidney and ruin somebody else's life. And how that's phrased in the- And I said, no, do not think like this. That's no, and he just started to cry. But how that's phrased in the literature though is the willingness to allow someone else to help or advocate on your behalf to well, help no. you. Right, how it's right. phrased is yeah. that we are unwilling. Yeah. Is that black and brown people are unwilling. See, it's phrased that we are unwilling to let somebody else come and help us. And that's not, uh, you know, that goes to the wrong mindset because we are very loving, tolerant people. And it is out of that love that, that, that we will say no to something that would save us because we don't well, want to hurt to. somebody else. That's what yeah. that's coming from. And see, that's why I say that mess in the body of knowledge is alive from the pit of hell, and we are going to correct that. Because I tell you what, my wife wanted to donate. She wanted to be an organ donor. Uh, she wanted to be an organ donor way before I needed a kidney. She wanted. Yeah. She said that she always wanted to be a living donor to, to give somebody, and I was just fortunate enough to have her at the right time because... She always wanted to do it even way before me, and it was she did it for me. So, you know, there are people that you don't have to think about, you know, um, taking somebody kidding. It's like a lot of times people want to help somebody out. You know, yeah. sometimes you have you get a live donor, sometimes exactly. you get a donor as deceased. You know, so uh, yeah, you can't think of it like that. You, you know, can't at you all. Can't. But yeah. but unfortunately, to be a donor too. Um, but I was told, unfortunately, that. They would they could use different organs or eyes or things like that if they absolutely had to. But because I had diabetes for so long, it kind of damaged some of the other mm. organs. Not like uh like I would need like a heart transplant or anything like that, but it wouldn't be strong enough to help someone else yep. because right, of right. The, from having the diabetes for so long. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 Diabetes is so pervasive. But let's let's talk because we're about to wrap it up, and I really want to want to talk about honoring the gift and uh, uh, the coalition because we are 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 really going after the wonderful innovations that have been done, and we know that there are innovative tests, that there are innovative therapeutics mm -hmm. that we can utilize. So Honor the Gift is all about the inno innovative tests, the DNA and RNA tests that can be used to mm -hmm. early detect whether or not your graft is viable, whether or not you, the transplant you have received is having any uh, preliminary signs of, go of failing. So Latrice and I are united in saying, please help us honor the gift and yes. you can check out what you need to do to honor that gift in the notes all you got to do is click on it go to our wonderful youtube channel and click on those notes and you can check it all out or you can go to our website uh my day job 
Texas Kidney Foundation, <laughs> www.txkidney.org, or you can go to Latrice's site. Latrice, what's your, where can they find you? So we're www.shininglightsinc.org. That's Shining Lights, L-Y-T-E-S, Inc.org. Now, Latrice, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your story. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank y'all for having me. Um, also, Honor the Gift is honorthegift.org if you want right. to reach out to them directly. So, yeah. But thank y'all for having me. Go ahead, old girl. Shining light. Shining, with shining star. <laughs> shining star. Shining, shining, shining light and shining star. Look, I'm all of that because God has rained down on me in so there many different ways. From so many Thank different you. times, I give it all to him that I am still here, um, going through diabetes, the near fatal car accident, um, the, everything that I've been through in life. I, I give it all to him that I'm still here. I've been through a lot. And, and, you, and you're still you looking good. Thank, Thank you. Even right. my you're still looking good. You're still looking good, girl. <laughs> Dude, somebody love to get them to eyes. Somebody love to get them beepers. And you've been listening to all the records with <laughs> Tiffany and Kevin on 9.30 a.m. The Answer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>